Hello, my name is Lily and in this video segment we will review how to set up a low pressure alarm on your client's ventilator. A low pressure alarm or patient disconnect alarm occurs when the client's circuit is no longer attached to the client and results in the client not being assisted by the ventilator. If you have a client who is ventilator dependent and has a minimum independent breathing time, um, an appropriately set low pressure alarm is essential for the client's safety and results in or requires immediate intervention. So the low pressure alarm value is actually a numeric value found on the alarms menu in, on the ventilator menu. Um, the ventilator will alarm visibly and audibly again when the pressure measured distally in the circuit is lower than the actual value set on the low pressure alarm. So for example, if the ventilator alarm was appropriately set, the client would be disconnected and the machine or the ventilator will attempt to pressurize the circuit and will not be able to do so. After three to four consecutive breaths being delivered through the circuit, the ventilator will visibly and audibly alarm, suggesting an alarm situation and likely a patient disconnect. So the trick about the low pressure alarm is that circuit components such as the ventilator tubing, the inner cannula, and tracheostomy can prevent the low pressure alarm from actually ringing or visibly alarming. So why does the circuit components prevent a low pressure alarm from occurring? It's essentially the back pressure that's generated within the circuit when the ventilator is attempting to give a breath. The pressure is measured distally here and measured in the ventilator and is mistaken as pressure that can be delivered into the lungs. The best analogy is picturing yourself blowing through a straw, a small straw, and that resistance or pressure that you feel is actually what is measured in the circuit. So if your low pressure alarm is actually set lower than the pressure that is being delivered through the circuit while it's not even connected to the client, the ventilator will not alarm. Therefore, it is critical to verify the proper setting and operation of the low pressure alarm to have it visibly and audibly alarm, otherwise it could result in death. So how do you set the low pressure alarm so that the ventilator will actually alarm when the client is actually disconnected? First you want to take into account the normal ventilatory pressures of the client so that you can use these in reference when you set the low pressure alarm. So to appropriately set your low pressure alarm on your ventilator, what you're going to do is you take your ventilator circuit and you're going to attach it to your inner cannula. Now your inner cannula is the most narrow part of the circuit. Um, if you don't have a tracheostomy that has an inner cannula, you can attach the actual tracheostomy um, instead. Once you have the inner cannula attached to the distal part of your circuit, or your tracheostomy is attached to the distal part of your circuit, and you've simulated a dislodgement of the inner cannula or the tracheostomy, the ventilator should technically alarm. If it is not alarming, a low pressure or patient disconnect, then you know that the low pressure alarm is inappropriately set. So what we're going to do is actually go into the alarms menu and we're going to actually adjust the low pressure so that a patient disconnect alarm will occur with this simulated disconnection. All right, so on the menu, you're going to go to or scroll to the alarms menu on your ventilator and on that, on that menu, you're going to find PIP centimeters of water. So PIP centimeters of water just stands for peak inspiratory pressure and in the three columns, you'll notice the minimal alarm, the maximal alarm, and the current measured pressure. So the numeric value that is set for the low pressure alarm right now is two centimeters of water. And the actual back pressure created in the circuit is four centimeters of water. So that is actually higher than the low pressure alarm. So that's why the ventilator is not visibly and audibly alarming. So what we're gonna do is we'll actually move the white cursor um, to, with the up and down arrows, to the peak inspiratory pressure. So it's already, you know, it's up. So use your up and down arrows to the peak inspiratory pressure and go to your low pressure alarm, which is the one that says minimum. So we select it, and once it's flashing, you can adjust the actual alarm. So what we're going to do is increase it so it's higher than your current pressure or the current back pressure in the actual circuit. So we're going to change it to six. Oops. So re-highlight it. So let's accept that and once you accept that, you also have to accept the second alarm, which is the high pressure alarm. So after three to four consecutive breaths, the ventilator should sense distally that the pressure in the circuit will be actually lower 
than the set um, low pressure alarm that we have now um, adjusted. So there you go. That's your low pressure alarm properly alarming visibly and audibly when the client is simulating a disconnection or a dislodgement of the trachea or tracheostomy. When setting your low pressure alarm, you want to set it as close to but above the back pressure measured in the circuit. The closer you can set it to your normal operating pressures, the safer it is for the client. However, if your client's normal operating pressures fluctuate a lot, you may get a lot of nuisance alarms. What you want to do is set the low pressure alarm above the uh, back pressure that's generated in the circuit, but close enough to your normal operating pressures that you're not getting nuisance alarms on the ventilator. Low pressure alarm should be checked periodically on your ventilator for both your bedside and chair ventilator. If you make any changes to your ventilator by adding a Passimir valve or an HME into the circuit, you should also check your low pressure alarm as well, as these things could create um, increased back pressure and change your low pressure alarm settings. Lastly, you want to take into account if your client has a modified Jackson tube with a Pearson adapter. Because the tracheostomy is so narrow, when you're actually assessing your low pressure alarm, the back pressure generated in the circuit with this breathing tube will be fairly high. So your low pressure alarm will actually be set a lot higher than what you've seen in this video. In summary, an appropriately set low pressure alarm is essential for your client's safety. An inappropriate set low pressure alarm can lead to death. The only way to ensure that the low pressure alarm is appropriately set is to simulate a disconnection from the client to the ventilator and ensure that there's a visible and audible alarm. If you are unsure or unclear as to how to set your low pressure alarm, please contact your Prop RT and your Prop RT can walk through this process with you over the phone.